What's up, my soldiers? This is Edinati, and this is Unscripted. Today, hmm, I have a comedian in the house. He's a pastor. Hey. He's, he, he's an actor. Ah. He's a director. Ooh. He, he's a writer. Mm. He's a part-time Ghanaian. Hey. His name is Kwame Yebo. Please, please, confidence. Hey, bad guy. Comfy, bad comfy. guy. We are Coffee. here, live and direct. How are you? I am doing wonderful, man. Wonderful, what are you wonderful. doing in Ghana? You know, they deported me from Nigeria, so I decided to just, uh, you know, find a new home in Ghana. And Ghana has been amazing. <laughs> this guy is lying. Amazing. Ah, no! Guy, is guy go and ask. They, go from they deported me from, I'm coming from Nigeria. And then you went to where? Where else will I go? Ghana? Uh, where else will I go? You don't want I don't know where you must take me. You must take me. You know what? You must take me. <laughs> hey guy, you look good. I like your your, your hat. Yo, thank Who you. made it for you? Thank you. Uh, some of our contacts in Anambra. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you got it from yes. Nigeria. Yes, yes. Originally made. Yeah. No. Before we start talking about Nigeria mm -hmm. and Ghana, let people know yeah. that this guy is from Los Angeles, hey. United States of America. Bam. I'm lucky to have him here today. Hey, thank you very much. So you're much. welcome thank to you. the script. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank so you. So you thank tell you. me, when did this all acting start for you? Uh, acting was um, professionally, I don't know, maybe 2011 or so. Um, but while in college in the United States, I, I felt there was a something that said, um, you're not supposed to be an engineer. You're supposed to go into acting. So that was the transition and uh, I didn't like that it was a battle because I like to hide actually so people think I like to be in the front but no I actually like to be behind the scenes wait before yeah. we even talk about acting yes you grew up in Nigeria in Nigeria where in Nigeria Anambra State Anambra slash Lagos State. yes so you'd be Le negotiant it depends on how you look at it <laughs> how old yes, were yes, you yes. before you left Lagos uh, maybe around teenage or so yeah. You were a teenager yeah. when you lived Lagos. Yeah. What was the life? I mean, growing up in Lagos. Oh in, man, in Brass State. Me, um, good, actually. You know, very filled with academia. Um, not to get sad, but my dad recently passed. But my dad was a a big part of our life, and just making sure school was huge. School was very, very important. So which made the transition into entertainment difficult to... For you. For, for them even, you know, to accept like, ah, this guy is a smart guy, he's supposed to do this, and now he's saying he wants to entertain. Are you, are you stupid? <laughs> so initially, it was daddy's idea that you should become an engineer? Uh, no, no, no. I, I think, you know, um, something in the medical field, de uh, definitely. Um, engineer became my, I think, my escape from the medical field, I realized like I was good with the sciences and the mathematics, but engineering was a way to really use more of the analytical uh, part of myself. And plus, when you get a bachelor's, you can't really do, do much, much in science it, yeah. unless you go into the medical field or some deep thing. But a bachelor's in engineering, you know, you could do a lot more with that. So. It's, so you yeah. did medical, you, you, you went to the medical school? No, I didn't. I just stopped at the bachelor's from school, but I, I did like uh, biomechanics and biological engineering in school. So as with the young right now, yeah. you were an engineer. It depends on how you look at it. An engineer that may not be practicing, so you can say that, yeah. Yeah. So I just use less engineer. Uh, <laughs> See, that's why they deported me from Nigeria. That's why they deported me from Nigeria. They said, this guy is less. Our brother here, get out. Great, yeah, yeah, yeah. great. So, yeah. how was it like? Daddy wanted you to be an intellect, wanted you to yeah. do something that, you know, like engineer, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you say, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm an engineer worker. Hey, hey, yes. I um, to do acting. <laughs> you know, I think it's their fault, actually, because <laughs> it's their fault. I think we, you know, Nigeria is crazy. Like, the way we left was our parents woke us up at like, 4 a.m. and said we're leaving. To where? America. Just Is that like how that. They, they would be Literally, <laughs> <laughs> Literally just like that. So imagine you are you're waking up at like 3, 4. They don't do passports for you already. They've done everything, but you are young. So I think there's a little bit of you might talk too much in those days. Uh, so it was pack your things and get out. But I think that w w was also a shock. And But th then again, it created a, ah, 
at any point, I can also shock you too. <laughs> you shock that shock. You shock that shock. That shock. <laughs> so, yeah. how was it for you the transition from Nigeria? You grew up in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and then you get to the states. Mm -hmm. What was the transition for you like? It was difficult, man. It was. It was like I actually didn't eat the whole airplane ride, and in those days, the travel was even longer. So I think there was they're giving you salad. And you're used to <laughs> onubu onubu soup. Onubu. Onubu. it's like what is this <laughs> so so there is i think the shock was like it was hard man um and then the assimilation to a different culture and i think my head was still there was no social media then so my head was still wrapped around i've lost everything back home wow. everything so when i told you it's very important to connect with yeah. africa yeah. and it's like some days it feels like you stole it from me, man. And so it's important to get it back. It's important to stay amongst us and, and keep building. But I know it was a, a good thing because they wanted us to go and learn, do things, and come back and improve it. And now I'm here to improve it. Great. Yeah. So now you're an actor. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you diverted from your engineer and then you said, I want to do acting. Yeah. How did it all start for you? Like, what was the first thing? Did you, did you dream? Some people dream yeah. that they want to become president. And actually, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, it actually came like, it wasn't a choice. It actually came like, you know, if you're spiritual, so like, like a vision type of thing. Because that was the battle of, I like to hide and you're telling me to stand in front of the camera. That's not my thing at all. Um, so, you know, you go through the almost, it feels weird to say, but you're arguing with God. And it's like, God qualifies the call. And so it was, no, this is, this is what I want you to do and go figure it out. So while in school, I started doing plays, just uh, writing plays, uh, writing skits. And um, I was fortunate to have friends who were dumb enough to enter my place. <laughs> and, uh, they weren't dumb, but just, um, willing to See. jump into it and and just play and and that made me kind of um learn some things tweak some things and see if this made sense if this was something that i can do and then um afterwards it was new york atlanta or los angeles and um atlanta was kind of close to home so atlanta won and so i moved to atlanta. so you started on the stage yes because yes you started writing plays yes big so time how was stage performance like for you? I, I think there's a, a confidence in just a, a courageous uh, move to just be there and have one shot to do something. And having, there's no retakes. So yeah. it's either it's, it's worked or it didn't work. And I, and I love the challenge. I was always, even in academia. So it's the same thing, you know, just somebody who loves challenges, who is willing to, uh, push himself and so the stage was like ah let's do this and me not knowing much stuff I think um, just playing around I did sneak into an acting class once and um, a friend you, of mine you were not doing acting at all no I was an engineer in school so a friend of mine was I don't I think it was like in school you get an, maybe an elective or something not an elective she was in um, a drama class and I can't remember, maybe they let her bring somebody, or, or I can't remember, but I remember just getting into the class and staying in the back and kind of listening for the first time what the teacher was teaching. Oh, and wow. yeah, and I left there saying, okay, let's try this. And we just started playing with skits, plays, and getting uh, comfortable, um, you know, and I'm always, I'm crazy anyway, so I think it was fun to, experiment, make mistakes, and um, and go back again. And yeah, it was good. So, starting with acting, you, you wanted to write your own skits yes. for your friends to play in it. Mm -hmm. Did you learn how to write the script? Or it was like, okay, let me just grab a pen. I'm thinking about these yes, scenarios. In yes. my head. I just yes. want to put it down and let my friends do it. You know, um, it was just jumping in. Um, but that was how I knew that this was something that God wanted me to do because there was no, there was no training in, yes, it was like a natural thing. And then over time, you tweak your natural gift into a, a skill form. 
Um, but that natural gift, um, it was evident early on that we would play with it or somebody would come up with an idea and I would kind of twist it a little bit and it became something more. Uh, but yeah, so we're just having fun every year and, and putting some cool projects and like, wow, now after that it's like you are, you look good amongst these guys, but can you go with the big boys and, and really stand out? And, and that was the, definitely a, a big experience. So we, we, we're doing stage plays, doing skits and all of that. Did you also go ahead to do, I mean, get formal education in terms of filmmaking and acting, or it was just all about the experience that you got it? Um, when I got to Atlanta, I then did some plays with um, some people who are trained, you know, who went, who went to school. So that was a way for me to kind of see uh, if I can, you know, stand with these guys and if I could fit into this uh, professional world, you know. It's different when I'm in school, but now it's, it's the real world. And so working with them, um, I picked up things like that and um, a friend of mine ended up uh, putting me in a in a comedic writing course and she paid my way into the she saw something and she paid my way into this course and that helped me to now see if my writing that i was doing could transcend towards this industry yes and um in the end it was good uh, i wrote uh two skits I, I, if i can remember and one of them received a standing ovation because we had to write and act it out. So you know wow. they casted it, and um, but that said, okay, you um you can play here, you can play here. Yeah. I know you have done a lot of projects, which I'm going to go into it. But when you talk about being in front of the camera, mm -hmm. what started? What film? What started it all for you? Ah, uh, complications. Uh, Complications was the first break, but... Um, That's a TV series. Yes, it's a TV series. Uh, but the first Hollywood, I did... So what I did was, um, when I jumped into Atlanta, I would do a lot of free projects, you know, because uh, it was a way for me to just work with as many people. So just jump in. So Yes, so... Yes, I just jumped in anything and, and learning from them too. And so, but the first official film was probably um, The Sacrament that I did, uh, but in terms of something that took me to the next level, Complications was a, a TV series. Complications. And, yeah, Complications, yeah. I know how difficult mm -hmm. it is to get a role mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. how difficult mm -hmm. it is to even go through the auditions. Yeah. In yeah. America, how yeah. did you learn yeah. the role? <laughs> ah, for complications. Hey, that <laughs> that one is hey, hey, wow. That one is is wild because um, I actually did a photo shoot to get some new headshots, and we got this makeup, which I'm very disappointed that you don't have a makeup artist here. This is very yeah. You very, like makeup artist? Hey, makeup artist. <laughs> Why did you not touch me? That? <laughs> Why did you not talk What time did you come to me? Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Eddie, you are going too far. What time did you come to me? Calm down. Calm down. This guy told Calm me. Down. Hey, American. God, God is good. He we is are. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. So, you know, so we had this makeup artist for this headshot, and I don't know what she put on my face, but my body started reacting. So, something was popping, and it didn't look good. But, you know, I went to Atlanta and, and personally, I didn't really have as much support because remember, I'm supposed to be this guy who's doing this year. So, so it was like, I'm going home and I do my normal routine. I'm going online, looking for work, going to various websites for auditions. And then I, you know, even though I'm down from the headshot thing that didn't go well, it was like maybe, it was like 1 a.m. or so, after midnight for sure, I went to Facebook. And I think these casting directors were just kind of rising up in, in those times. Now they are huge, they're number one in Atlanta. And they had a casting call for a role. And I said, ah, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., I sent them an email, and I went to sleep. And woke up maybe in the next hour or two to look. 
maybe four or five. They said yes, but I needed to be there at seven. One a.m. to four or five is not two hours. It was a short time of me just <laughs> let me just rest more. Wake that up, wake up. <laughs> yo, because in, in that time when I tell you I was grinding so bad, I was sleeping maybe two or three hours a day, because there was a thing of you can't fail. Because you can easily be successful as a medical doctor, you have the brains for that, you can be successful as an engineer, and now you are, you are here, there's no time to waste. So it was, it was bad to be sleeping, you know, that sm a small hours, but there was a, a hunger to be successful. Um, but man, the email came and it was like, can you come in at like 7 a.m.? Guy, they sent the script, the audition, audition sites. Script, yeah. It was like three scenes, like 11 pages. And I had like few hours. When I tell you like, read it, grinding, learning the lines, went in seven o'clock, a friend of mine helped me, went there, did the audition, got a second call back. That's like a second round later on, came back, got another round. And after three auditions, I uh, got the call. Three? Three auditions got the call that you booked this role. Now, this role was supposed to be there for two episodes. But what they did was they only shot the pilot, so they only shot the first episode. And mostly when you do that is, the network haven't decided if they're going to buy it yet. So we only did one episode. And then maybe after some months, they found out that they want to see the show. And then, then the rest of the series was shot like a year later. And wow. so from two episodes, I ended up working for eight episodes. So that was a, a big, a big boost. Yeah, thank you. A wow. big boost, yeah. So it was from that time that roles started coming? More. Or more you started roles. going for more auditions? More auditions, yeah. More, yeah. Auditions. more auditions. Is it like every role that you have played, you had to audition for it? No, no. Um, a good amount. A good amount. Uh, very few, um, maybe, on a Hollywood scale, a handful has come in from somebody just sees your work somewhere else and like, we want this guy. And Hong for Jesus was one of those, you know. Oh. They reached out, the directors uh, reached out, they loved my work from Atlanta, which is with uh, Donald Glover. And they said, we like his work, we want to work with him. So, some, some happens like that. But audition is not bad. I think if it's a, if it's, um, you know, depending on the type of role, it's good to see how the character, the actor can carry what it is. So not opposed to auditioning when it's necessary. You have done Little America, mm -hmm. a film that talks about immigrants mm -hmm. from Nigeria coming into the States. Mm -hmm. With that particular series, mm -hmm. which is on Apple TV, right? Yes, yes. How did you learn that role as well? Uh, that one was definitely an audition. So that's a TV series that followed many different um, immigrants. So there's Uganda, there's India, there's different people. Um, it was very specific because they wanted somebody to also speak Igbo, um, which is uh, a language that I speak as well. And so the audition ended up going even online. Instagram, my brother sent it to me, but my manager also sent it as well. And so read it. I loved uh, the message. I loved what it was doing. and jumped in the audition and um, at that time that was definitely the 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 biggest thing that i had done and i became the face of the show as well so that was a uh, a big boost um, then from that i was nominated for a film independent spirit award you were and nominated yes yes, wow. yes 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 that was a, a big one for me yeah and then another one came huh. bob has a bishop yes which shows on cbs cbs yes Yes. Tell us about that one. Um, Baba Hatsa Bishala, uh, Gina Yashere, they're doing a great job. It's, 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 I think, the first show that has like a Nigerian family, and let's even say an African family on primetime TV in America. You don't really, really see, uh, see that. So that's the first of its kind. And I'm sure from that there will be a lot more. Um, but the auditioning audition came to um, as well and did the audition and Gina was like, that's the guy, that's the guy, that's the guy, that's the guy. So it happened and, and from there, uh, thank God they loved my work and kept bringing me back and it became something special, yeah.
this one, yeah, this particular one I have to talk about, I think I, I'm jealous of that ah. because I love this guy, Jordan yeah. Peele. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I love him. Yeah. I love his acting. Mm -hmm. And recently, oh, some years now, he's been doing directing, he's been doing executive producing. Mm -hmm. And I get to know that you've played a part in a film he executive produced, yes, yes. which is um, Hunk for Jesus, Hunk for save, Jesus your save Your Soul. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. My guy, how do you get this thing now? Nah? How do you get that now? Nah? Wait, do you see Jordan? Ah, yes. Do you see Jordan? Ah, yes, son. Hey, no, no. It, it was a nice experience. That that was one of the ones that um the directors reached out from seeing my previous work, so I didn't have to audition. But it was it was one of the most fun I've had on a project, just playing with Sterling, Kay Brown, Regina, and Nicole Bahiri. Um, had a amazing time on set and watching the content and how it came out and then, you know, afterwards meeting Jordan, Daniel Kaluuya, um, just, it was, it was a good, I'd say, a risque project, you know, because of the content, uh, but a fun one, a great comedy and Man, tell them they need to do a part two so I can, you know, come back. Do a part two. Please. Part two. Part two. Hong for Jesus. Please, please, this time around, I want to do what I pass. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Bring Eddie. <laughs> it looks like if you're in the States and you have to do anything entertainment, mm -hmm. you definitely need an agent or a manager. Uh, I would disagree, but I think at some point it would help you elevate. Um, I, I, I think it's important in anything that you are doing to kind of learn how to, to market yourself and get something for yourself and then somebody knows, but you also know if I've gotten this thing by myself, then you coming in is supposed to elevate me. Um, managers help, like the complications was me finding a product on Facebook. Right, so there was no agent or manager involved. So there are projects that uh, the managers and the agents are definitely important. Uh, but no, no matter what, I tell people a manager or an agent is is ten percent, maybe fifteen percent, and um, you are what the rest. So no matter what, um, you have to be willing to to do the work, and that is not just acting; it's marketing, networking. Um, training, getting good, uh, whatever it is, but agents and managers do help, uh, for sure, they do help, yeah. <clears throat> now let's talk about payment <laughs> in America, which is far different from Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know, I know, I'm aware that some actors get paid even they get marked up daily. Mm -hmm. You go on the show, they mark you per day, Mm -hmm. the more days you spend on set. Mm -hmm. How is the structure of payment like okay. in, in America? Yeah, uh, I'm guessing you mean for, for major films? For major films, yeah. for, yeah. yes, yes, for So, it, it ranges, if, if, it's a, if it's a role where you're coming in for one day, then there's a scale for SAG, um, and that scale also depends on what type of budget, you know, there's many scale that SAG has. So um, you can, it can be as low as 125, right? Depending on what type of film it is, and it can be in the thousands for the day. But then you have a, a co-star daily rate versus someone who's like a guest star or, or a seasoned actor who they may only come for the one day, but they, they can a negotiate a lot. Um, but there's, there's room for negotiations as well, uh, but if you're just starting out, you may not have a lot of leverage for uh, those things, but as you rise, it's, an, it's a negotiations game as well. But, but, but you have rates for daily rates, you have projects that get you on a weekly scale, um, like Bob Hearts is a show where um, it's a weekly scale, so you have two days of rehearsals and then they film about three days so they're getting you for about five days. five days yeah so certain projects will book you on a week certain days it all varies um, is it very important if not a necessity 
to be part of SAG before you 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 you, you get yeah. roles? No, no. Um, I wouldn't advise somebody to do that so quickly um, because you you have to be honest, right? If you're opening a, a business, are you good? You know, let's just talk about a restaurant, right? You know, you need to get people to like what you're doing before you kind of uh, maybe increase your rates or get more customers. So in the beginning, if, you, if you're quick to join SAG, then you've closed yourself from the projects that are not SAG. So open yourself up to have customers from different places, yes. And then what that does is it helps your reel. Now you, when you have all these things that you've done and you added an amazing reel, then you can say, okay, I'm at this level where, you know, I might need, need to transition towards the union and um, experience some of the benefits. But jumping too soon may not be best idea. The, the best idea. Yeah, it, it may not make sense. Yeah. You have done big projects, mm -hmm. like, like with the ones we have mentioned. Yeah. But most importantly, you are a writer and you are also a director, yeah. which a lot of people don't know. Yeah. How did you start with your latest project oh. that you directed? Oh, man. Uh, that one is a, <laughs> it's a crazy uh, one because um, I used to teach at a high school. So the engineering thing, um, there was this engineer, I, I need to do something. So I started, um, I was a math a teacher. And while teaching, the experiences of that, I said, this junk is hilarious. This is content. And my body just started saying, just write notes of your experience because it will become something. So. From that, I've just been developing the story and grown with it. And I've written many other things, but New, New Day Mr. E is one of the ones that is special just because of um, the experience that I, I had in the school system from tutoring to teaching and all that. Um, but yeah, so been writing and tweaking the story in, in different ways. and. And then we decided to, it's time, I think it was, it was ripe to shoot a sizzle, shoot a short, got into some festivals. We also got into Afrif in Nigeria, so oh. I, was, I was there too as well. Um, uh, but just to get the content out there and see what people feel about this story. And the reviews have been amazing, it have been amazing. So we're going bigger. Yeah, I, I have yeah. seen the trailer. Yeah, I, I love it. Thank you. Thank it, you. It looks something of a high standard, and so I'm not surprised to say that you've gone into a free and other other places. I know I'm a director myself. I, I'm a producer. Yes, yes. I know what it takes <laughs> to fund productions like this. Mm -hmm. Tell me, a guy, young man from. Nigeria, mm -hmm. you went into the US mm -hmm. and you're already doing directing. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're doing, how is funding like? How were you able to put together all of these things? Ah. To, yeah, how, how did it come hey, about? Hey. Sweat and tears. <laughs> <laughs> Sweat and tears. You use Father Savi. A so. lot of casting and binding. <laughs> a lot of prayer warriors. A lot of, you know, um, definitely a lot of uh, savings towards this thing you know um sort of put your money where your mouth is and um friends came together as well a bit family um but i i believe in new day mr e it's it's not even it's it's bigger than just a cv a tv series or a film um the story is is impactful and uh, but from where we're going to go next we definitely need investors. You know, this was something for me to just show what what is capable of happening. You know, what this can be. And but uh, for sure, the big, the big, the next big thing um, definitely needs investors to come on board and to make it special. So investors, I know y'all listening. I know y'all listening. <laughs> Please come, <laughs> come through. Yes, 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 yes. So. Do you consider coming back to Nigeria to do productions? Ah, 
<laughs> is a must, not just Nigeria, Africa in general. It is, it is, it is a must. I've even been speaking to, to Ben as well, just different things. We actually shot two skits or three yesterday. So just playing around and just uh, having fun, but it's, it's a must, man. It's a must cause even for, again, my father, it's, he sent us to go do, to improve our lives. And it's like, I owe him. I owe him to build us. And I owe us to build us. It's like someone here looking up and saying, ah, all these guys are doing great, but you never come back to give back. You never come, come back to improve here. So it, it has to happen. It's a must. And so um, I've been here, Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, just learning. And I'm open to people who are serious and willing to get to the next level, you know, especially when I'm, I'm being available, right? We don't know when someone is available, right? You, you, you take advantage because you don't know how long it's going to last. Like at some point it's like, ah, he's now busy. He's no marathon call. So it's like, um, at this point, like I'm open to seeing how can I be of help here, man? Just let me know. And, uh, luckily, um, it's sad, but you know, there's always positive and negative everywhere. Hollywood went on strike, so things wasn't happening. So it even o opened the door of, I have some more time now to, you know, do yeah, things, yeah, do a few other things. So, um, see yeah. this guy, yeah. this yeah. guy, <laughs> he don't walk with Jordan <laughs> Peele, this guy. Okay, yeah. what do you see about the African cinema? What do you think we're doing right? In the African cinema, yeah. talk about Nigerian movies, Ghanaian movies, because you have had experience in America, which is totally different from the way we handle things here. Mm -hmm. What can you say that we're doing right? Doing right is making something out of nothing. That is, um, I applaud any filmmaker back home because filming anything back home is difficult. True. It's difficult, and you're seeing many people may not have had the formal training. They are learning by themselves. They are watching maybe Hollywood and going to a program for six weeks or something and coming back and Trying just to... pouring it. So making something out of nothing by far. And then the noise that we make for the things we create, you know, you are, you are backing it with some type of numbers. I think that's good. And I think, um, I tell people, I say like, Kobe Bryant still had a trainer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you have the natural skill, you have, you know, all the legends, they're still being trained. I'm still being trained. And so there's no, you get to a place where I don't need a coach. No, if there's a gig that I'm doing that I know I could use some help here, now it's time to find, who is the person that can help me get this thing that I need? And, and yeah, even for the Little America, I remember I hadn't even gotten the audition. My spirit was like, yo, I need to learn this type of art form. So I wanted to take a class and I was very specific. It was very specific. This, and I told the teacher, this is what I want to add to my repertoire very specific i described the type of role boom literally at the end of the four week acting class literal america audition came literally that's boom how you, that's how you got the role boom so it's it's it, it's also no matter what level you are you're willing to learn you're willing to be a student and just willing to improve and you hear even um um man ah uh, God bless his soul, Chadwick Boseman, got even at the level that he is, saying he's still going to audition for roles. It's like people think, you know, sometimes you get there and every actor is, no, there are actors who understand the art, don't mind the audition process and know, you know, the thing about film is, even for me is, when you do something, it's there for life. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so whatever is there next 30 years, if I see that and it sucks, it's it like, sucks. ah, why? Why did I even, <laughs> why? Sucks. Now you go to depression. If your grandkids <laughs> is playing this, you start saying, if you, if you put that TV on again, <laughs> outside, you know, it's, it's, it's so, it's like whatever you are, you are putting out, making sure that you are in the right space to put it up. So one, even being okay with the material and being in the mindset to play that role efficiently, that years later you don't look back and have regrets Great. of anything. Oh, they didn't pay me enough. It doesn't matter. It is past because those things, it kind of haunts you, you know, in, in maybe regular jobs, right? And I'm not trying to pick on any job. Um, some of the things, if I give you a burger and you eat it, the burger is done. You don't, you can't 10 years later, ah, that burger you gave me, it affects, we don't know if it's the burger that I gave you, you know, there's no evidence of anything. Yeah. But film or music or the arts, there's an evidence, it's there. No matter what you, no do. Matter what you do. So it's like, ah, it's, 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 it's make sure you are really cool with this thing that you're doing and you are ready to do it effectively and when you do it, you, you let it go. That's it. You let it go and let the filmmakers, directors do it. You, you let it go. So. What is that one thing, if you had the opportunity, you would like to maybe change about the mm. African cinema or make it better? What is that one thing? I wouldn't want to say like wow. it's negative, but what is that yeah. one thing that with all your experience and everything that you have learned, you would say, if African cinema is able to add this or change or adjust this, I think we're going to go far. I would say the art of storytelling, the art of it. And um, I think a naturally gifted person uh, doesn't necessarily understand the art yet. You are just naturally gifted. And somebody else that is well trained can tweak certain things and let you know you have some gifts, but hey, let me brush up this, let me tone. So in general, I think um, the art, even in, in writing, um, the way it comes off in cinema, right? There's e even the way that it's presented on, on camera. Right? There's a way that you would act in a play that you wouldn't do in a film when it's a close-up. Right? And um, to, to be, you know, in acting it's like be, don't act. Right? To, to be that character. So the art of storytelling, the, the art you think, of, you of think, pulling you. Think, you. you think our storytelling lacks some sort of something? Yes, um, but I've seen great, I can't say all, I've seen amazing content. Um, even at the uh, free, I saw the young people are coming. Oh, the young people, um, I'm, I was blown away. I saw a lot of shorts and um, they are studying. They are paying attention to the details. It's in the detail, you know, everything on camera has to make sense if you, you decided to put it on the frame. It has to make sense. Yeah. I know you want to be Ghanaian so much. <laughs> Guy, I've eaten light soup, peanut soup. I've eaten, oh Lord, help us. So one monk in Kwan? It, it depends. <laughs> you said that. Your name is Kwame Yebwa and you I, wanted to lay the it, Isn't it my name? I beg your pardon. <laughs> you don't forget to change it. <laughs> <laughs> See, you told me you wanted to learn Chui. What happened? No, 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 no. It's not I wanted. I was speaking Chui fluently. Then one girl, she's listening. Mommy Mensa Mahon. You took my textbook in college. Since then, she has handicapped me. So you, she you handicapped So me. what Chui do you speak? I, my Chui is now... <sighs> It's okay. not boko boko. Boko boko. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what what I just saying? At a yell. Um, what else can you say? Buhu to say. Buhu ya pa na uswe. Medasi. Eh, buda masisi le. Eh, we. 
Oui, 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 oui. When did you do Oh, oui. You can finish anything. You can finish anything. Yeah. yeah. Before we wrap up this interview, mm -hmm. you are definitely in Hollywood. You're climbing to the top. Okay. Recently, the issue of blacks getting underpaid is a subject that is on. What do you have to say about it? Mm. Um, that's a tough one, and um, I. It's, too, it's a few sides. I think we do need to change the issue and um, we do need to push for the industry to fix that problem. Um, but I also think that we need to come together and the world is changing where indie filmmaking is going to become a thing or is already a thing. And I think when indie filmmakers come together, even if they're stars, and get some investors and put some money up and, and do your thing and pay the black actors what they're worth and do them for yourself. And then as you do them, we are all, we are all reminded this is what we deserve. And, you know, and I think the more we do that to ourselves, the more others will be forced to do that, right? You know, if we're paying well and our projects are making money, and we're seeing those numbers. And when somebody else calls, right, you say, this is it. And when we did it right, we still got the numbers. And at the end of the day, it's a, it's a business game. And, um, and if we're not comfortable with certain things that's happened, I think you have to be strong enough to say no. Um, it can be difficult, and that's where people get you in a trap. Right, you want this, but if I don't pay you, pay you, can you afford your mortgage? And so now, right, you are put in a tight spot, you know. So we have to gain a business acumen that can, if you do want to say no, you know when that you you'll be fine. We, what do you mean by we? Is it black actors? Black actors, even actors in general, everybody. I think, um, you know. Just because your food tastes good doesn't mean you're going to have a successful restaurant business, right? And um, we have a lot of people who are spending years in an acting school and ask them what they've done business-wise. Nothing. Nothing. So your food tastes good, but I'm sorry, you're not going I to be a successful restaurant. restaurant. Yeah. So let's become, let's run a successful acting business and let's get trained and get good and then let's get the business thing right. Yeah. There are young, there are a lot of young actors who look up to people like yourself. What would you say to them hmm. that they are watching you right now? How would you encourage them to keep on fighting? Because they look up to people like you. Um, um, please don't look up to me. <laughs> <laughs> look. Look, look above me. I don't, I don't think they should look at me, but look beyond in the sense of um, dream big, um, get good in whatever you're trying to sell, and spend a lot of time learning business, because this is a, a show business at the end of the day, and we get so excited. Oh my gosh, I want to enter sets. Put me on camera. Um, just learn the business, and I think you, you, it would it would make a difference. A lot of people yeah. forget to learn the yeah. business aspect of the whole show. Yes, yes. And the, it becomes a show without a business. Yeah, oh, man. Yes, it becomes ah that one. It becomes a show without a business. <laughs> yeah. And when when you're just a show, people will take advantage of of the show. Yeah. You are a very handsome man. Jesus is Lord. My Ghanaian sisters, many of them are not married. Wow. Are you married? Yeah, but yeah. There are a lot of Ghanaian sisters that of course. Want to connect you with. Of course, of course. I'm single. Um, I'm not married, but at any moment I could be. Because they said Ghana is beautiful. 
So you and never our know. ladies are beautiful. You never know. Our women are beautiful. You never know. So that is to say that you never you know. We'll get married to a guy. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, confidence. Thank you so much. Yeah. I wish you all the best. Thank Anytime you, you pass through Ghana, let me know, Damn. and then I will definitely give you. Is that <laughs> Banco and like soup? <laughs> I will take it. I will take it. <laughs> so just, take this has it. been confidence <laughs> from the stage, that actor, producer, writer. Next time we'll see you on script. <laughs> With Banco and Light Shoe. Banco and Light It needs to be in the center of us. Yeah. Bring it. No, it's not going to eat. It's for you, only you. Ah, Go you know, your bank. Do you know it? If I eat, do you know what it's going to be? <laughs> do you know the term for the two of us eating one Banco? <laughs> <laughs> my guy, <laughs> if my sister Banco, I give you, you know the incest with it. Hey, <laughs> what is going on? What is going on here? What is going on here?